police, right? And they all use the same excuse. Now, let me just as an example use Schumer, because you all stood, you applauded. I was one of 15 senators who signed the letter demanding that the president immediately address the Armenian genocide. <laughs> writes the same letter. They all write the letter. But whether it's the president of his party, Barack Obama, or the Republican Party, George W. Bush, they take the same code of honor to the president. They never say the word genocide and repeat it over and over and over again. What about sanctions against Turkey, not just Iran, until they get down on their hands and knees and apologize and pay her?
stand here as somebody who is a broadcaster. Because unlike some of the others who spoke, I recognize that there was a body laid out in front of a newspaper. I'll never forget the sheet over his head. Two bullets to the back of his head. The executioners had took away a dink. And you would have thought there would have been journalists from throughout the world and through Turkey who would have been protesting in the streets against the violation of the journalistic code. Where were all the journalists? Where were the journalists in Turkey? Why do only a few people to this day remember the hero of journalists who stood up to the rock? And now I'll finish on this note. I was the Grand Marshal of the Pulaski Day Parade this past year. I never uttered a word in Polish. I don't know any. I never told the crowd, oh, I love pierogies and kielbasa. I don't. It's horrible food. <laughs> but what I spoke about was Katyn. I said my father, Chester, my grandfather, Anton, educated me that at the beginning of World War II, when Stalin and Hitler were going to turn the Poles into speed bumps and carve it up. <coughs> then it was Stalin's secret services that took 20,000 Polish officers and shot them like dink twice in the back of the head and buried them in a mass grave. The Russians, the Soviets refused to acknowledge that for years. Finally, Putin acknowledged it just a month ago in a trip to Warsaw because the Poles had been defiant. In the aftermath of Putin, no friend of Armenia, I might add, when you remember the days of the Soviet Putin at the back of your neck and the KGB, when Putin threatened Poland, who stood besides Georgia and said, you invade Georgia, we will take you on. He said, I will incinerate you, Poles. The Polish Prime Minister and President did not blink. And he recognized, I've got to make peace with the Poles. And then the Soviet aircraft carrying the president mysteriously went down. All day, you stood against the Soviets. You stood against the Putins of the world. You have Americans who couldn't find Armenia, Azerbaijan, Turkmenistan, Oh, Kazakhstan, they can because of the movie. But couldn't find the Caucasus or any of the countries in that area of the world on a map. And yet they will come to you and they will speak to you on your day in which you talk of the sins of the genocide. I suggest to you, enough of the politicians, enough of the mumbo jumbo. It's time to get tough. Don't let them only speak of Armenians in America when they find members of organized crime. They never give you credit. Oh yeah, reality show. No, what about the doctors? What about the intellectuals? What about the wealthy contributors to philanthropies beyond the Armenian community? You never 